I had somebody say recently, it's nice to be good for something. And I thought, Shannon. Oh, I like that. Yeah. You know, I thought, what a great thing to remember when you're managing people. Something. Right. When you're managing people yeah. or working with a vendor or a customer or something, if you can inspire the thought in them that they are good for something, they are valuable for something. I mean, of course, it's true about all of us. But when you can communicate that to someone, uh, it makes a big difference. And and it will. Wow, yeah. It, right. If they're especially if they're doing work for you. Like it will yes. inspire them to do their best job, you know, like, but even for your customers, it. it's just a good thing to do. Plus you might get something out of it. And I think, yeah, that's- and I, I, I agree with you. And I, I just randomly coincidentally here, I just read an article about a great way the intro to a comment like that is a couple different ways. One would be, Hey, I'm not sure if you're aware of this and then saying something that at what they're good at, or yeah. I don't know if anyone has ever told you this oh, I like because that. it makes that statement you're about to make so much more impactful. Um, and it's kind of a form of persuasion, if you will. Um, but it adds important that, that prefix to any of those so comments. so much power in the, yeah. I don't know if anyone has ever told you this before. I don't know if anyone told you this, but, uh, you know, you're oh. great at boom. Um, and so I, I, I really have grabbed onto that and started, uh, making those kind of comments before, or, or you know, before I'm, uh, mention something to somebody. I think it's a great idea. That is great. It really sets it up. It. I, I don't know why I'm, I, I'm sitting here a, a, a little bit lost for words because I know that that works. It works on me. It works on other people, Yeah. but I don't know why. Like the comment, the compliment is the same either way, but there's it's something. A form, I think it's, yeah, it's a form of persuasion Well, yeah. because yeah. You, someone may have told you this before, but our minds, the way they work, you're like, Oh, no one's ever said that. No one's ever <laughs> said that to me. Right. Maybe yeah. that's what it is. It's, it adds right. importance. It, it yeah. does add so importance. So if you think about that. Oh. Yeah. And, and speaking of important things, you know, if, uh, if you've ever thought about what, a, what you're going to do or your own, uh, sense of self-worth, if you will, and your own personal brand, maybe beyond your small businesses that you are, are you know, starting running. This is going to be a great show for you today. We've got a great guest in Brian Burke, who's really focused on personal branding, especially up on LinkedIn, and has helped his businesses grow and helped a lot of other people. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited to talk to Brian again. Absolutely. Yeah, Brian is, he is the master uh, at b- building and maintaining his personal brand. And it really helps his business. But it's not, I mean, he does it, he certainly knows that it's good for his business. That's not why he does it. He does it because he it, he he loves it. And yes, he does. You and, can tell. And you can tell. And you we all we all look, we all love talking about ourselves. It it is it is a thing, right? We love it when people listen to us. Maybe that's a better way to say that. Because we love it when we sure. are heard. And Brian has found his way of being heard, and I think you can extract from that some ways for you to be heard. And he's got some really good tips. In fact, there's some very actionable small businessing tips uh, right there in the episode too. So there is, and it it comes back to your original comment, Dave, about we all want to be good at something or known for being good good at something. We want to be known for being good at something. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's, you know, you, I can just feel it when you're talking to Brian about this, uh, uh, it's an experiment, if you will, that he's been doing the past year or two of building up this brand, uh, his personal brand. It's, it's great. It's great. I'm excited. Yeah, it's great. What else is great and can help you build your personal brand is Text Expander at textexpander.com slash podcast, our sponsor for this episode. Text Expander allows you to really craft the responses that you're going to send to people. And it might be a little snippet that just has your address in it, right? Or maybe even just your email address, your phone number, but it can also be long, long bits of text, you know, many paragraphs worth where you're sending a customer service response to someone that has a question or maybe a sales inquiry comes in and you're like, right, I want to be able to send them everything they're asking for, but you don't want to have to craft it every single time. You don't want to have to dig into your sent folder to find the last time you wrote it and then modify it. No, you put it all in text expander so that you look good. You look responsive, you look efficient, and you look accurate. 
And it's really hard to get those three things right all the time. Text Expander makes it possible. And you can sync your snippets amongst all your devices and all the devices of your team. And because you're a listener to The Small Business Show, you get 20% off your first year by going to textexpander.com slash podcast. Go check it out. You're going to love it. It's something Shannon and I each use. We couldn't live without it. I know you're going to feel the same way. Just go check it out. Maybe you won't, but I think you will. Textexpander.com slash podcast. Our thanks to Text Expander for sponsoring this episode. And with that, my friend, I think it's time to listen to Brian, unless you've got something else. Let's do it. Let's go small business together. Let's go small business together. He is Shannon Jean. I'm Dave Hamilton. And this is episode 302 of the Small Business Show. Kind of just commenting back on some of the things we've already discussed, like being authentic first and foremost. If you're not authentic, that's going to be a terrible detriment to your personal brand. And the second thing I would say is uh, not posting the first content would be a mistake. Make sure you are mixing it up. You know, if you're stuck on one form of content, it's not going to work long term. And LinkedIn is constantly changing their algorithm. You know, someone that I really respect on there for his videos, his name is Jonathan Palmer. He posts incredible LinkedIn video tips. And he just showed how his engagement went down about 90% about a week and a half or two ago. And it's just due to LinkedIn algorithm. You just have to change it sometimes. So being mindful of that. Um, and the next thing would be, the mistake would be being inconsistent. If you're only posting once or twice a week, you almost don't have a chance to grow at any you know high rate. I would say you need to post one to two times a day. And some of the experts are saying it needs to be even more than that to be kind of constantly in the feed when people are seeing it, you know, even upwards of five or six times a day. So you can take a day off every now and then, but I wouldn't recommend taking more than one to two days off. You know, as small business owners, all of us were just really focused, obviously, on creating healthy and profitable businesses as part of the path to living a charmed life that we talk about here all the time on the Small Business Show. But what about building your personal brand all on, on your own, expanding off your business success, creating a network uh, based on who you are? And, and I'm excited. Today on the show, we're going to be joined by one of our favorite guests to discuss the art of personal branding. So Brian Burke is the founder and chief Mac man at SellYourMac.com, founder of RenewedMacs.com. He's also a board member and technology chair for the Adopt-A-Class Foundation. Uh, he's, and he's, you know, he's pretty much the most active person you're going to find on LinkedIn. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's he's got so over true. Four, yeah, you just Pete hit over 14,000 followers, and he's the guy in the bright blue suit with the huge smile on his face. And today we're going to talk about Brian's take on the power of building your personal brand. Brian, thank you for joining us again today. Oh, thank you, gentlemen. If you saw my face right now, I have a huge smile. I'm so excited to talk to you guys. Yeah, Believe cool. it or not, I can imagine that. Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> because literally every picture of you has that huge smile, which is awesome. That's part of your personal brand, which is great. It, it is. is. Got yeah. to bring the positivity to everything. I, I love do. it. Yeah. So uh, before we jump into the personal branding, how about just giving us a quick update on Sell Your Mac and uh, your relatively new business, Renewed Macs. Uh, what's, what's going on with your businesses since we had you on the show back in 2018? A lot has changed. We yeah. are 100% virtual now. Oh, we've, nice. we've closed our retail store due to COVID, no shocker. Yep. And we can't even keep up with the demand. Uh, demand has been soaring for everything Apple and supply is extremely constrained because everyone's either uh, handing them down or their businesses aren't upgrading as, as fast as they normally would and stuff like that. So right. seeing a huge supply crunch in the industry and uh, to kind of combat that, we're continually trying to pay more to our customers to try to get them to trade in and upgrade their products. And uh, keep finding these people, keep finding them some good new homes and helping everyone out. Yeah, that's great. I, it's, I imagine it's just a, it's a constant challenge. I mean, I was in the Mac business for years in the Apple space, and I pretty much spent most of my time, you know, buying, purchasing, and trying to just find more product all the time. So I could, I could. That is the name of the game. Yeah. And Apple has been killing it this year with their uh, like, yes. pr products and excitement. Like 
They're, they're third um, event in the fall already. <laughs> they, they've done three events now in the fall and they're the best events Apple's ever done. And I, and it's because of COVID because they've had to pre-record them, right? They, they're not just like doing them, them live. Yeah. I, I, I think too. Better. Yeah, I could see is. an integration of that in the future of like having some of the cool video stuff integrated right in. I hope you're right. Yeah. I, I mean, I like getting together with, I mean, I would, I would be prefer to be doing this interview in person too, yeah, but right. you know, but I, <laughs> I miss that part of it, but you know, the, the, the rest of it, like yeah, Apple's been killing it. So I, it doesn't surprise me that you're having trouble with supply. Um, computer people use computers longer than they used to. Oh, uh, they dramatically, do. Dramatically. Phone, phones yeah. too. I think everything and that's is why, being yeah, I, to I, at least another year. Yeah. Right. Right. It's a, yeah. Uh, yeah, I see. Because they're we, so good. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. You're, you're, the requirements to upgrade, the development cycle uh, is nothing like it was, you know, five years ago, even, uh, you know, especially 10 years ago, where right. there was so many dramatic changes happening that you always had to upgrade to, yeah. to get the next best thing. So it's, it's a different world. Um, okay, so l let's just start at the most fundamental thing. Why, wh what's your take on it? Why is building a personal brand important? First of all, it's fun. This is a <laughs> something you do differently than your day-to-day -day work. And I think it has potential to span multiple businesses. So the kind of way the reason that I think it's important is, you know, I can help me out with SellerMac.com and RenewMax.com. But what about my next five, 10 ventures? If I have this amazing network of people that support me, I'll be able to kind of quickly launch a new business and get some traction or get feedback on initial business ideas, you know, really the possibilities are endless. If you have a, you know, a group of supporters, that's, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 out there. Yeah, that that's, I, I couldn't agree more. So when you started doing it, were you, I mean, uh, is it true that you mainly focusing on just getting your businesses to grow and then it just, you know, kind of exponentially took off from there? That's a pretty good synopsis. You know, I, I'm more focused right now on trying to grow sellyourmac.com. Yeah. And so when I was, you know, when I'm posting, I'm trying to get my audience to be interested in not just me, but upgrading their products. And of course, doing that in a you know, non salesy, fun way. And, um, you know, I think from there, you know, we kind of open, open it up. So it's like, I wasn't initially thinking that I was going to be maybe launching new businesses with this huge network. Uh, but it's, it's kind of evolved quickly and it maybe grown faster than I would have ever imagined. Uh, so I'm you know, pretty excited to see where it, where it takes me next. Yeah, sure. So now I mostly interact and, and see your network on LinkedIn. Are, are you doing similar things on other networks like, you know, Facebook and other things as well? Not really. I used to post way more on Facebook, just a lot more, uh, family stuff. And, yeah. you know, I still posting some business stuff on there. But the the business stuff doesn't resonate as well with the Facebook audience. You know, they're they're not expecting that. They like the little kid pictures that I share. Yeah. And yeah. also, it's so saturated with content. I think that's the biggest issue. Is there's uh, you know 600 million people on LinkedIn, but there's you know billions of people on Facebook. I, I think you nailed it. I, I because I hear this a lot from people that say, "Oh, Facebook doesn't work for business." And I find that to be wholly untrue, but I agree that it is much harder for Facebook to uh, much harder to get your stuff shown on. Yeah. Facebook, yeah. To get noticed. Right? It's a different angle. I think. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't so, put much effort into the Facebook or Instagram lately. It's really just all on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn. Okay. So let, let's. But now everyone says TikTok. They, they keep telling me I need to start <laughs> TikToking. Yeah, I, I I can imagine in that in that blue suit. We're going to talk about the suit in a minute. So, uh, uh, sticking with LinkedIn, then how and uh, I ask why well, I think I know the why, but how have you amassed such a huge following? You know, over fourteen thousand people on the on the network. It just seems like so much work because uh, I have is. exponentially <laughs> less than that. And yeah, I mean. It, it, it's a lot to manage. Um, can you share a story or two about the benefits of, of all that hard work somewhere where it's really paid off and a, you know, a connection that you've met or something like that? Sure. And just speaking to the hard work portion of it, it's a lot about persistence and being consistent. Like I think at first when I was, you know, posting good content, it just wasn't getting as many likes 
And you know, out, over time, posting two, three times a day, the algorithm really starts to pick up on that. And you have to be extremely active in terms of um, connecting with other people and commenting and liking on their posts to get them to come back to yours and continue to kind of grow the views and engagement there. So yeah. it's not, so it's just that that effort is not just the posting. So I really just want to be clear about that. Mm -hmm. If you only posted, you'd probably get almost no results. Yeah, I, so I mean, it's, it's the commenting and the the in the I mean the what engagement we, what we call yeah. engagement, right? Commenting, yeah. liking, interacting with people that makes sense. Hundred yeah. percent. I yeah. noticed you doing it even on your own posts, right? Where you posted uh, <laughs> last night. <laughs> all and all these like, experts tell me I should be commenting and liking my own stuff. Yeah, so I because know, I, I noticed you you posted, <laughs> and then I was looking at it because then I like, hey, we're looking forward to having you on. But then you kept comment commenting and i was like wow there's already like i don't know 20 or some comments and and half half me. you but then i could see it the i could just see the engagement as i was looking at it later in the evening i was like wow man he's getting a lot more people comments you're interacting back and forth so it's, this was this is almost midnight <laughs> yeah so it's really i i uh is is it Am I right in that that engagement is just critical for the LinkedIn algorithm just to see and, and it's probably equally as important to making your own comments on your posts, right? It is. And you, you have this like yeah. 30 to 60 minute window to kind of really kick it off. And after that, oh. if it hasn't got much traction, it's not going to do that well. Ah, so once, okay. Because I, I was going to so say, don't, again. Don't post and run away. Yeah. <laughs> right. Again, this is like, this is not unique to LinkedIn. This is yeah. every, Facebook, very much true. You have to For like, sure. en engage. And, and I would say you have that same 30 to 60 minute window. If it hasn't picked up steam, it's very uncommon that it will down the road. Like it, something could happen and that causes it. To you have to have a big it. influencer to come on and start engaging That's with it or something. Right. That's what right. it is. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause I mean, yeah. I think also some people under the misconception that just cause you post it, everyone in your network or in your group or in your followers is going to see it. And that's just not the case. Wow. You know, yeah, good luck. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah good right. luck. <laughs> good luck. And so yeah, this is uh, not an if you build it, they will come. No. Kind of thing. No. You, you, yeah. the, the network wants to see this. Oh, well, this is a popular post. People are talking about it. We want to show it to more people. And then it cut, kind of get going. Um, I, yeah, it's also the variety. You, I, I used to only do photo posts. And then I kind of learned through others that having the different uh, type of content, you know, adding the videos and adding text only. And text only is something that just didn't really resonate with me, but I'm kind of forcing myself to do more of it because the algorithm likes it. And I guess people mm -hmm. like the content too. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So I'm going to come back. So and stories. Ask yeah. Stories. I, I love it. So talk about, a, a you know, a, a connection, a great one. something, yeah. Something <laughs> that impacted you where you're like, wow, this is really working. I need to continue building this network on LinkedIn. So I will preface with saying it is a slow start. <laughs> I've been focusing on this really hard for about a year and only recently starting to win some real deals uh, through my LinkedIn network. So just in the last week, I have two new business customers that have come through a LinkedIn post. And the first one actually saw my post and started engaging with me uh, through message. And it's funny because the post he said he saw was me wearing a black suit or oh. black tux with my blue shoes getting ready for my brother's wedding. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and nice. something about the blue shoes on the black tux literally jumped out enough to make him want to reach out and uh, do a deal. <laughs> uh, that's great. Yeah, so that, that was kind of crazy. That is and crazy. then uh, this next one was someone I just connected with in the last week. And it took a little while to, to figure out how he initially saw me because we were not connected on LinkedIn at first. We were second connections. And I met him at a Macworld event uh, eight years ago. And I didn't, I didn't remember him initially. And he said he's been seeing my content from other people liking my posts that were his connections. And it just jogged his memory enough to reach out. Wow, that's cool. And when did the idea for the blue suit come along? The blue suit started uh, about two years ago. And it came from a guy that wears an orange suit. <laughs> I've seen that guy. <laughs> the orange suit guy. People think yeah. we're the dumb and dumber combo when we're uh, together at these events because he's local yeah. in Cincinnati. Oh, okay. So he he did it at a um a ENO breakfast event and I asked him about it. And later that day he sent me a link to the blue suit. 
And these blue suits are so inexpensive. They're $99 (laughs) delivered. So I had no reason to say no. (laughs) That's great. So I ordered my first blue suit. This was a couple weeks before this huge uh, IT event out in Miami, Florida called the ITAD Summit. So the first day at the event, I had so many people coming up and engaging with me that I've never met in my life. And the only reason was because of the blue suit. They would see it and they would walk right towards me. And it was an instant conversation starter. It broke the ice. It was perfect. Then the blue suit was born. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love it. it. It does. It makes you stand out and it, and it you know becomes part of your brand. Your, yeah. your kind of trademark. And like, oh, find that guy in the blue suit. That's the. I mean, the, by the end of the so two-day event, event, people were already like, hey, yeah, the blue suit guy. If you talk to him, like they, they knew it. Of and if I, if I wear it enough and, you know, I post enough videos with it, people start to remember. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, okay. So I am wearing blue. If anyone is wondering, <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. just don't so, tell us what's blue and we're all good. It's all fine. <laughs> so, and, I, and I know you do a lot, like you do the, the, you know, the adopt a class. I love those posts. You're helping out, you know, uh, kids yeah. and acknowledge your hands. And I love that. So I want to talk about that for a few minutes. And obviously, you know, there's the obvious benefit of helping others, but, and, and I, I don't want to sound cynical, but it also, you know, giving back and helping your community, that's an important part of building your personal brand as well, right? I would say yes. I mean, that stuff really resonates with people. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm doing it to help out the community and help of course serve yes. students, yes. but I'm also trying to share it. And part of that is to the motivation, inspiration, and encourage others to do it too. It's not necessarily that they're going to trade their Mac in me. I mean, if they just did something to help someone else out uh, because they saw that, that would make me incredibly happy as well. Yeah, that's great. I love it. I love it. And and I obviously you're getting, you know, we all get, get something back from giving, right? It, it's a it's just a great thing to help and especially in technology where you can make I usually things. smile and cry. <laughs> yeah, that, that's awesome. Um so let, let's talk about business for a minute. I, I would I would think that, you know, working I know it's hard work and and building your personal brand, but isn't it also or, or would you think that it's a it's a great way to kind of get yourself beyond the kind of daily grind, you know, all businesses kind of can be monotonous sometimes. Um, Does it help you kind of recharge you to get back into the swing of things at your regular job, if you will? It's tough to completely separate it because I'm thinking so much about my business when I'm Mm -hmm. doing my personal branding stuff, but I would definitely say it is a battery recharging activity for me. You know, I'm connecting with people that also have, you know, very high energy and very positive stuff to say. And I'd say LinkedIn in general is just such a positive network. I've I've had so few times where there's been any negative comments on my posts. um, And there's there's no political crap or anything else like that. So it's refreshing in general to be on that platform. (laughs) Yeah, I think that that, uh, I've seen a lot of people kind of migrating, you know, towards that LinkedIn because of that, because it's just so business yeah. focused and, and you do see everyone, everyone's helpful, right? They're all trying yes. to lift each other up, right? Exactly. E- yeah. Everything is looks like, how can you knock someone down faster? Yes. <laughs> I, totally. Yes. I, 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 I don't really engage with content on Facebook anymore. I only, I would only post and just leave because I don't want to read the rest of the stuff. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, I used to enjoy it and I don't even, I just can't work anymore. And especially as I got businesses on Facebook that were doing things, I was like, look at all this data. I don't want to share all this data anymore. You know, I'm, and, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen the new Netflix special about it. Of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but that, don't think that LinkedIn's not doing the same thing. No, <laughs> yes, I know. Yes, we, in fact, we, we just talked about how they are. That's right. Yeah. 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 So, but, I mean, I'm always amazed at how quickly and how often you're engaging with these commenters and people. And, and, and it just seems like that, to me, is the difference. It's, you know, okay, I'm... I'm doing posting, I'm doing whatever, but I, I come back to that comment you made earlier. Uh, yeah. It's that interaction engagement, commenting on your own post. Cause I, I just wouldn't think of it in, until like, sometimes I'll comment in there if someone asks a question, of course, but sure. I look at your post. I'm like, Brian's the first five comments right here, you know, <laughs> but you're spurring. You got, you got to kick it off. <laughs> you're asking questions. You're like, what, what's your favorite thing? What's it? And I, and I love yeah. that. Um, I find that, Yours is a mix of comments about things, but 
maybe even more frequently, it's questions to uh, inspire other people to engage. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I'm you know, trying to inspire engagement, see what the network really thinks about stuff. I mean, some of it's from my own knowledge or business knowledge. And you know, people you know, tend, to, tend to answer the questions if you put them in the main body of the post, not as much in the comments. So yeah. I would say... Um, I do try to jump on, you know, as fast as possible without interrupting too much of my daily work. I mean, the iPhone has uh, nice notifications that pop up, so it's easy to jump on them quickly. Yeah, no, that's and great. I'm on there for a few hours a day. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know, I could tell. <laughs> so, uh, so, <laughs> so it is that that, but that like we could almost ignore that in passing. But you're you're actively doing this hours per day. I think that's yes. the important thing yeah. for people to take away here is that this is not just posting hours per day. It is engaging. Exactly. Hours per day. Yeah. So a lot yeah. of these, a lot of these LinkedIn guides or coaches are saying like, here's how to spend only 10 minutes a day. And that I think you can get like a comment or two and make a post, but you're not going to really get the engagement or action to grow your network. Right. Yeah. And, Speaking of growing your network, did you start out by going out and just following and connecting and trying to to connect with more people to then get them to come back to you? Or was there a different f system that you used? I did connect to a lot of people. It was more of a spray approach to start. It wasn't like hyper targeted in my industry necessarily. And then I think you find a few supporters that really help you grow. You know, if you can uh, become friends with someone that has a much larger network. There's kind of one person in particular that really stood out. Uh, his name's Corey Warfield. And he had, let's say, uh, 100,000 some followers when I first met him a year ago. And now he's got, you know, a quarter million or more. On LinkedIn? On LinkedIn. Oh my God. And he would, you know, comment on my stuff right when I posted it. I would, you know, I would send it to him. And you know, after his comment, I might get another uh, few comments and you know, ten likes the next like few minutes. And it was just he was just bringing his network to my post basically. So that was really awesome. And I had another strategy where I would tag a lot of people, and I've realized now this is kind of annoying for them. So I've, <laughs> yes, I've, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> But that was my idea of how to get people to see my stuff. I'm like, well, if I tag 100 people, I mean, people are going to come look, right? <laughs> yeah. See, well, why, why are you tagging me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, you know, some of these people private message you and say, hey, can you not tag me anymore? <laughs> yeah. uh, so finding the right balance there for something relevant to say, I'm giving someone props. You know, I, I had a, my post today when I made 14,000 connections. I the, the idea of the post was to help people make more meaningful connections. So I was tagging people and calling out what kind of work they did or why nice. to follow them. So tagging, but as long as you're, it's be applicable. mindful. Yeah. Be mind. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Right. Or even ask. That's, that's something I've learned. If you get someone with a huge following and you want to engage with them more, shoot them a private message and ask if it's okay to tag them. If they say yes, yeah. then you're all in. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so, speak, okay, speaking of, you mentioned just a couple little mistakes, but I, I, I want to, have you, you really been focused on this for about a year or a, or two years on, on LinkedIn, building that network out? I would say two years in total, um, the last year, just being more mentally conscious of my time around it, of like, oh, I'm going to spend this hour in the morning, spend an hour at night, you know, kind of yeah. stuff like that, and really just being hyper consistent with the posts. That's great. You, you are, I, I think it's important for people to understand. I mean, you are very active on LinkedIn. You're very outgoing on LinkedIn, but it, it all of this is, <laughs> but, it, but that's exactly it is. Yeah. This is a genuine reflection of you, right? You, you're not exactly. I, I mean, yeah, yes, you are aggressively friendly, <laughs> it, you know, right, right. But I like but that, that term. You, aggressively you are that friendly. way in that's person great. too. And so you can back it up. you, it is a natural thing for you. If it's somebody authentic. says it's authentic. And if somebody I am says, all authentic, if somebody says to you, Whoa, dude, like, you know, please don't tag me anymore. You'll, you, you'll take that in stride. You'll say, okay, Hey, no problem. You know? And oh no yeah. Problem. I don't mind the feedback. I mean, give it to me. Well, well that's it. But even like for me, like, and, and this hasn't been a problem, but let's say it were, I know who you are. And I, I mean, I, and, by that, I know that you are that outgoing person. So it's like, oh, well, of course he's like being aggressive and tagging people. It's what it's, he, I can't he, if help we it. were, 
if we were at a cocktail party, you'd be running around introducing everybody to everybody else anyway. You're just that exactly. Person. And yeah. and so I think it's important for people to to realize, yes, spend that hour or two a day managing your own social media and engaging. And be authentic in an authentic way for you. That's right. Yeah. 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 It doesn't exactly. You, you don't, it, you got to find what works for you. It's going to be a little it different. It won't than, work yeah. long term if you're not authentic. Don't you go buy a, you might be able to pull it off for a few months and for a certain business purpose or something like that, but yeah, not don't for order a blue suit. Don't go buy a blue suit. Just figure out what's going to work oh, for you. I got to cancel my order. Or if you do <laughs> yes. buy a blue suit, tag me because that would be fun too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but something that's related to you. I mean, yes. if you're not familiar with your brand, Mac, yeah, sellyourmac.com. <laughs> that color blue is permeated throughout their business. That's their color, yeah. that, that light baby blue, I guess. And uh, so it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so uh, tell us, you know, you know that we we love mistakes on the show. You were featured in our, our uh, mistakes. This book, you know, I book. loved it. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, you know, g- g- gangbusters up on Amazon. Everybody likes to f- hear about other people's mistakes. I will, I'll plug you guys for that. Your Amazon bestseller list. Awesome. That's awesome. Thanks. So think, can you think of a mistake or two that someone who's, you know, trying to go out and build their personal brand and replicate some of the success that you've had, um, you know, a mistake that you, you might have made or something else that you you know would be good for them to avoid. I think it kind of just commenting back on some of the things we've already discussed, like being authentic first and foremost. If you're not authentic, that's going to be a terrible detriment to your personal brand. And the second thing I would say is uh, not posting diverse content would be a mistake. Make sure you are mixing it up. You know, if you're stuck on one form of content, it's not going to work long term. And LinkedIn is constantly changing their algorithm. You know, someone that I really respect on there for his videos, his name is Jonathan Palmer. He posts incredible LinkedIn video tips. And he just showed how his engagement went down about 90% about a week and a half or two ago. And it's just due to LinkedIn algorithm. You just have to change it sometimes. Uh, So being mindful of that. um, And the next thing would be, the mistake would be being inconsistent. If you're only posting once or twice a week, you almost don't have a chance to grow at any you know high rate. I would say you need to post one to two times a day. And some of the experts are saying it needs to be even more than that to be kind of constantly in the feed when people are seeing it, you know, even upwards of five or six times a day. So you can take a day off every now and then, but I wouldn't recommend taking more than one to two days off at a time. Are there automated you know, programs for LinkedIn, like Hootsuite and stuff that you can schedule posts and things, or you just have to actively go do it. So you can use Hootsuite and Hootsuite is one of the only kind of authorized LinkedIn platforms. Uh, but at the same time, there's some deficiencies. You can't uh, or tag people organically using that. Oh. And then if you are, you're not going to be um, following up on your content and, you know, adding yeah, some more okay. information and comments in there. And I think that's the biggest mistake. If you're not engaging, you're just not going to have any growth. Yeah. It, it's it, to make it work. You have to be right there. Yeah. And, and your the network job. won't love you. Like, I mean, it, it, people yeah. are sending me so many direct messages telling me how much they love my content and encourage me to keep up my positivity and stuff like that. But if I didn't comment back on their comments, then they would never reach out to me again. They're like, all right, this guy is just, you know, out in cyberspace somewhere. Yeah. And I, I also like, on your me- your messaging, when they send you a private message, you have an autoresponder <laughs> that just says, "Hey, th- you know, my I get yeah. s- I'm getting so many messages. Here's here's a little tidbit of information about wh- you know what I'm doing or, and and sell your Mac and stuff, and I, I will follow up with you, but it takes it may take me a little more time. That's great. You, you know, you're exactly just being, being new feature, the away message. I love it. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I'm telling people to come engage. You know, there's so many just like spammy sales pitches. Like if you oh, have something yeah, to say, yeah. come say it in the post. If not, no worries. <laughs> Yeah, I use a text expander, you know, auto thing. I'm just like, hey, yeah. I'm happy, happy to connect, but I don't, I'm not interested in any of your services at this time, you know, because it's just, con- and I, I what, feel you compel- don't want to learn more about Bitcoin and Forex yeah, trading? Or, or, yeah, uh, how uh, I'm going to make you so much more money and send you all these leads. It's like, no, I, I don't want that now, maybe in the future, you know, but, uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't work. I don't know the, you know, the first thing you say to a new connection is not buy this from me. Right? I know it just does not work. I'm and trying to I, coach people on that. They're sending these yeah. crazy messages. I'm just like, guys, this doesn't work. Am I even going to read it? Nobody does it. Yeah. And they still do it over and over. And it's this very similar kind of pitch 
that you get, especially with lead gen and sales. It's like a spam things. email. It is. Yeah. It really kind of. It really is. Yeah, but a spam it, email. it's cheap to. I mean, I'm not. I'm not defending this. I'm just yeah. free. explaining it. It's if, yeah. yeah. Effectively, it's free to send. So if even if your response rate is one out of ten thousand, well, okay, great. Like, awesome. I got one. Like that's all that matters. <laughs> they made right? one yeah. sale with their ten thousand connections. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. It. Yeah. But yeah. if that's if that's your metric, then okay. Right. I mean, it. It again. Um, please don't do this, folks. But I, I don't don't wonder why it's happening. You That's why it's happening. Yeah. Just move yeah. on. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Or so, at least just send a short one. <laughs> something. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know, how I could. I mean, I, how, I, how, I, how much will you guys read? I mean, you got no. you have two sentences and I'm done. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah. Well, I think it's some of them I've seen where it's like, hey, I, here's some value I can add. I saw or, or they make a comment where they can. They've obviously read my profile. First, that's yep. a that's a start. That's and, huge, and, right? Or I, I I heard you on the small business show, or I read your your book. Those kind of connections, like okay, well, now that, you're going to read it. That gets me a little further along, right? Because I know, yes. oh, okay, they, they they are putting a little time into this. It's not just this automated boom, boom, boom. So <laughs> you know, know your your audience, I guess, right? So yes, know your audience. Tell them something about what they do as opposed to saying where are you located or what do you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So what's next for you on the personal branding front? Are, are you going to continue to grow this, you know, the Mac man persona focusing on LinkedIn or is there, are you working on any, anything new? I guess maybe TikTok. Now that they tied it in with Shopify, my renewed oh. max.com store is built on Shopify so I can do selling directly on the TikTok post. Oh, I see. And I know I know nothing about TikTok right now. I'm, I think I'm it involves even, dancing. You might. I, I, I gonna say, uh, you've so. got those shoes, so you're good to go with the dance yeah. moves, man. Yeah. I got bad knees, but I can still dance. I'll give it a yeah. shot. Yeah. You you could get some some exposure up there uh, for that. Okay, but also so, really, really pushing yeah. on LinkedIn though. I I yeah. can see myself, you know, two three years from now having a hundred thousand connections and using that to really launch new businesses and also help a lot of people out. If I can share advice or. Uh, any Apple tips and stuff like that, they're going to help people out. That would make me incredibly happy. I think it's great. And I love that uh, that you're always talking about helping others, giving back, adding value. That it's, it's, you know, it's authentic and it really helps build your base of uh, support of people that in turn, when the time may come, would like to help you. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Okay. So we, we've got a kind of a new question we're asking our guests because we're really focused in 2020 all about action, you know, and we, we really want to train people that the term small business is not a noun. It's really a verb because action is so important to be successful. Oh, yes. Is, is there is there one action item that you could leave our listeners with that they could do today to help them start building their personal brand? That's a great question. Take action. <laughs> yeah, what don't is just, it? Yeah, yeah, no, don't, don't just think about growing it. I mean, start writing down content. So okay. for me personally, I'm prepping content ahead of time. And sure, there's, there's organic content. You know, Today, I posted a quick video about the new Apple Mac launch and stuff like that. But plan these posts in advance. If you can make a week worth of content, you're much more apt to actually get it posted at a consistent basis. Yeah. I think that's what you're going to need to kind of get started and take that action quickly. That's great. So like a content calendar, if you will, where they're, okay, this week I've got yeah. this going on. And yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's really And cool. mine, I don't like actually add on a calendar. I use my Apple Notes app and I have, yeah. you know, I might have 20 or 30 kind of future posts prepped right now across a range of different ideas. Yeah, so find your authentic idea. voice, think about your core values and start posting about that because that'll, that'll help show your passion. If you're super passionate about it, then people are going to resonate with that and they're going to engage with you. Very cool. Brian, thank you again for coming on the show. I love your energy. It helps energize me. Oh, uh, thanks. What's the best way for our You could only to see me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's right. Walking around, hands in the air. Uh, I know the best way for our listeners to connect with you is on LinkedIn. We're going to put a, a, a link, obviously, in the show notes. Um, where can they go learn more about Sell Your Mac and Renewed Macs? Right on the website, sellyourmac.com. Go there. It's very apparent what we do. We help people trade on their Apple products, get cash form, make it super fast and easy. And if you're on there, you can click on the top right. There's a little button that says buy renewed. and You'll be able to take a, a renewed Apple device right from there. That's awesome. Thank you again, sir. And uh, we will see you in the comments on LinkedIn. That's for sure. Oh, I love it. 
Can't wait to connect with a hundred more people from your network. <laughs> there it is. I will do it. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Take care. Cheers, gentlemen. Man, that, that there was a LinkedIn masterclass that we just yeah, took he's part a good in. guy. Yeah, he yeah. really and, and well, yeah. What I what I love about it too is he's helping. He doesn't want anything in return. No. There's all kinds of people out there trying to sell. Hey, is this what you should do? Da, da, da. But he's just like, hey, I'll help you. Come in, link to me, or you know, uh, mention me, and I'll mention you and help out back yeah. and forth. And he, he he's a real that authentic that guy. Helps. I mean, yes, yes, it is. Like I said, it it is authentically who he is. And I meant what I said. He would. If you were at a yes. cocktail party, he would be introducing everybody. It's just who he is. But aggressively friendly. <laughs> aggressively friendly. <laughs> That's I love that. But he does benefit from that. I don't yes. mean to say that he does it only for that benefit. He does it because it it's wouldn't who, work if he did it just for right. That, right? But yes. it there there is a huge benefit to helping people, and he does it by being aggressively friendly, which is great. Yeah. My advice yes. to everyone who's listening is don't try if you're not already like Brian. Don't try to be like Brian. Find your way to help people and then go do that. And Correct. that's that's going to that's what's going to work for you. Yeah. And it yeah. takes a while. I mean, it, it, it takes, a, I think, a long time to figure out what your message is and, totally. and what being authentic about your your life and your business is. And, um, and you know, it, it's just it's just different. I mean, we were even talking at the end of the show with Brian a little bit about, hey, what about this? What about that? And it's like, yeah, that's it is a great idea. Uh, we don't do this little other thing. But, right. um, you know, it, it, you don't have to do it all. You just got to find what works for you and what resonates and what helps your own you know, your own brand or, and, and your business. And also you're giving back at the same time, helping other people, which is just, you know, huge. Totally. I am going to throw this out here though. I, I am actively looking for someone to be a podcast producer for me and lots of things, including small business show, but, but really to nice. work for us at backbeat media and do some, do some stuff. It could be a probably halftime job or a full-time job, and I'm, I'm fine going either way. If that's you, find us. Feedback at businessshow.co. I will, I, I, I'm very eager to talk with you. And, and there's, that's great. You know, yeah. I, I have money to pay you. So, yeah, it's good. Always a good thing. It is always a good thing. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 <sighs> Thank you for listening. Uh, please go and leave us a review at your uh, podcast directory of choice. It really helps us out. Uh, gets more people here. Keeps us keeps the guests coming on so we can keep it interesting for you. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, anyway, we've told you feedback at businessshow.co. We've got that. We've yep. told you to review us. Businessshow.co slash reviews. Uh, go tell somebody else about the show. That's what we would love. That's how we all get to keep living that charmed life together. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. 